Hello, Laverne here, and I'd like to thank you for joining me. May this video be a blessing to you and to your loved ones, and may it honor and may it glorify our Father in heaven. In this video, I'm going to be speaking to and giving a interpretation of a prophecy found in the book of Daniel. It is found in chapter 11, and it pertains to the end times that we are living in and the person that many people call the Antichrist. Some would say it has to do with the beast. It has to do with a man that is going to come to power. He is going to attack believers. I've made videos explaining that the Antichrist is actually a, a poor uh, title, if you will, for the person that's going to come into power, who's going to cause this period known as the seven years of tribulation. I've explained that he's not so much as going to be an antichrist as he will be a counterfeit Christ. But in the book of Daniel in chapter 11, it explains that he will honor a particular God. We are told that he will have no regard for the God of his forefathers. So he's not going to honor the God of Abraham. But we are told that he is going to honor a particular God, a new God, a God that his forefathers never knew. And that God, the name given for him, is the God of fortresses. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain that Americans, and in particular, American Christians, are in fact honoring this God, this God of fortresses. When we examine what is going on in the United States, when we look at the culture, when we look at Christians, mainstream Christianity, we can see that the vast majority of Christians are actually unregenerated sheep. I've made a good number of videos talking about similar topics, exposing the corruption in the churches in the United States. And I'll include at the end of this video uh, as a in-screen addition, uh, links to videos that some of you might be interested in. Videos I've uploaded that are of a similar topic pertaining to the end times, pertaining to who the great prostitute is and where the Antichrist and beast are going to come from. For example, I will include a link to a video in which I explain that per capita, the United States has more false prophets than any other nation in the world. I'll include a link to a video in which I share and explain why it is that the Catholic Church and the, the system of the popes, right from the time of Constantine forward, has been the great prostitute. The Catholic Church and the Catholic Church system is, without question, the great prostitute that is described in the book of Revelation. Unfortunately, many Christians who recognize this, they make the mistake of thinking that the Antichrist must come from the great prostitute. But nothing could be further from the truth, because we are told that the great prostitute works with and partners with the beast. And in fact, the great prostitute rides the beast, which means is in control of the beast. So they work together for a time being. But then we are told the beast grows to hate the great prostitute and ends up destroying her. Well, if the Antichrist comes from the great prostitute, comes from that system, then it means that the beast grows to hate and destroys the Antichrist, which makes no sense. And it, it does not follow. It is not in line with the rest of prophecy. So even though the Catholic Church is the great prostitute, it cannot be from the Catholic Church that the Antichrist comes from. However, we are told that the great prostitute has many daughters, and those daughters are also prostitutes. While I've explained in videos that her many daughters are in fact the thousands of different Protestant denominations that were birthed at the time of the Great Reformation. From the Great Reformation, we see this birthing of many daughters that are also prostitutes. And it is going to be from one of these daughters. It is going to be from Protestantism, using the Bible made up of 66 books, which 
I've also explained in videos, is connected to the number of the beast. And so from Protestantism, the Antichrist, and the beast are going to rise and create their system. Christians are going to help, not hinder, the Antichrist and beast. And so with this background, I'd like to delve into why I believe uh, the far-right Christians, the militant Christians, which that number is growing. These Christians are, in fact, not worshiping the God of Abraham, but rather a very different God. And in fact, most Americans, not just those on the far right, are unregenerated sheep, unregenerated sheep. And they are worshiping a very different God. In some cases, they idolize and worship money, the God of man. They worship a God that is more like a genie, granting them wishes, their every heart's desire. You have people who believe in the prosperity gospel, while this is a very different God that they serve and honor. You have people who believe and follow a doctrine or theology of by faith alone. Again, this is a very different God that they serve, a God of easy believism. To say a sinner's prayer or be water baptized and you're in. You cannot lose your salvation from that point on. Well, this is not the God of Abraham that they serve. So, again, with this background, knowing this, I'd like to look at the God of fortresses. We are told in Daniel that this evil, wicked man is, he's not going to have regard for the God of his forefathers. And as I explained in another video, I believe the proper rendering for the next line to follow is that he will have no regard for women. This means that in the end times when he takes power, he is going to force women to become baby-making machines. And I'll include a link to that video as well. So we have this man. He will not regard the God of his forefathers. He will not regard women. But he will honor a God called the God of fortresses. So think about this. Look at the time we are living in. If you believe we are living in the end times, think about what nation of all the different countries in the world today, what nation do you think best could describe or best epitomizes a nation that honors a God of fortresses? I believe when you look at the number of guns in the United States and you look at the gun culture and you look at what's going on in the United States today, there can be no question that it fits the bill. The United States, without any doubt whatsoever, most closely fits a nation that honors the God of fortresses. And so the United States and the Christians who make up mainstream Christianity, especially evangelicals, they are actually working very hard to establish the Antichrist and Beast system. They want to give guns to teachers. This is what the Republican Party that claims to be the Christian Party. There are those who say, if you vote Democrat, you can't be a Christian. No Christian, according to some pastors, can be a true follower of, of Christ and vote Democrat. So the Republicans claim to be the party of Christ. And what are they doing? They are promoting guns. What do they want? They want teachers to be trained so that they can carry guns. They want armed guards at a single door. These politicians, Republican Christian politicians and their followers, what they want is to take a school, have only one way in and one way out. You have to leave the same way you come in. They want to have metal detectors, and they want to place armed guards at that entrance. Well, that is the very description of being a fortress. They are making schools. They want to make schools into fortresses. 
Why? They claim it's for safety. It's to keep your children safe. Well, this is what the God of fortresses is about. It's a promise of safety. And they are using guns to do it. As Trump said, the only way to beat a bad man with a gun is to have a good man with a gun. But who defines good? You have Republicans who are, are saying they want Democrats charged with treason and to be executed. So who is going to define who can have this gun? Who is a good man? Well, the Republicans, the Christian militants, these are the ones who will determine if somebody's a good man and capable and worthy of carrying a gun. Now, if this is something they want to do at schools, you can be sure it's going to carry on and be done in other places as well. Schools, churches, malls, movie theaters, and so on, all are going to have an armed guard at an entrance. Now, I tell you the reason for this is to get people used to seeing armed guards, used to seeing people carrying guns. And the purpose of this is to get them to feel safe and to feel vulnerable if there isn't someone cl close to them carrying a gun. And if they are themselves unable to carry a gun, then they're going to feel naked. They're going to feel vulnerable. This is the whole purpose of the God of fortresses. Make people feel safe by having these armed men and women in every aspect of their life. Think about all the preppers, people who have built underground bunkers, people who have turned their homes into fortresses, literal fortresses. Think of all the people that have a dozen guns, many of them Christians. In fact, I would say the majority of people today who have multiple guns are Christians. And why? It's to make them feel safe. Well, I tell you, they are honoring the God of fortresses. And this is why I say, all of these mass shootings, especially when it comes to children, when somebody goes in and massacres a dozen or a couple dozen children, innocent children, they are actually sacrificing to the God of fortresses. They are making sacrifices to him. And yet no one is speaking about this. You have people who claim that every abortion is a sacrifice to Moloch. There are many Christians making this claim. Every abortion, even if it's the day after conception, many of these Christians claim this is a sacrifice to Moloch. But I tell you, the priests who worshipped and served Moloch would have been angered at somebody having an abortion. They never would have considered that to be a sacrifice to Moloch. No, the priests who served Moloch, they wanted women to give birth. And if somebody had an abortion, rather than going through and providing them with an actual child that could be sacrificed to Moloch, while well, they'd be angry. So this idea that abortions are sacrifices to Moloch, well, it simply is false. However, children being killed in the schools or in churches, this without question is a sacrifice a living, breathing sacrifice to the God of fortresses. And Christians are enabling this by refusing to introduce laws that would curb the purchase of guns. American Christians, so many of them, idolize guns and the gun culture. They feel naked without a gun. They feel unsafe if they don't have a number of guns. Think of all the Christians today, pastors included, and especially Christian politicians. How many of them have you seen holding a Bible in one hand made up of 66 books and a rifle in the other? And I mentioned specifically the 66 books of the Protestant Bible because it is connected to the number of the beast. And it is connected then to this God of fortresses. How many Christians claim that this is what God wants? He wants every Christian to 
carry a rifle, a assault rifle, so they can protect their rights. I tell you, this has nothing to do with the God of Abraham. Think about what Christ had to say about the sword. Christ said, if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. And I want to be clear here that he was not talking only about physical death, but rather about spiritual death. In the same way that when God told Adam that if he ate of the tree, if he ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he would surely die. Well, he wasn't talking physical death, but rather spiritual death. He was talking about separation from God. And this is what Christ was saying. If you live by the sword, you are going to die by the sword, meaning you are going to be separated from God for all eternity. None of the early Christians, none of the apostles, after the, uh, the event with Peter, when he used the sword to cut off the ear of a guard, from that point on, after what Christ taught, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. We never hear of anyone carrying a sword, no Christian carrying a sword from that point on. None of the early church fathers did. No mention of that. No, they refused to pick up arms. Rather, they would choose to become martyrs. Choosing martyrdom over e e even picking up a sword in defense. And yet today, Christians, we have a very different type of believer today. So many unregenerated sheep following a God made in their image. Rather than believing what they read in the scriptures, they choose to create a God in their own imagination, in their own mind, and they choose to follow him. My brothers and sisters, we need to look at what's going on in the United States and understand that it is the only nation in the world that has more guns than what it has people. The only nation in the world that is having all of these sacrifices made to the God of fortresses. All of the children, and not just the children, adults as well, anyone that is killed in a mass shooting by some deranged gunman, these people have been sacrificed, unwillingly, but sacrificed to the God of fortresses. And yet no one is speaking about this. No one is speaking about how the Christian right is working so hard to, to create the Antichrist and Beast system, to put in power people who will completely destroy anyone from another party. The trickery, the lying that is going on in order to put people from the Republican Party into power. This is not of God. Now, I'd like to give two more examples, and I'd like to pinpoint or at least give one point in time where we can look at and say this was a start of something new. It was a start of a, uh, a slope that the United States started to go down and, and a path to the Antichrist and Beast system. I'd like to look at 1954, for it was in this year that the Pledge of Allegiance added the words, God added the word God to the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, some of you will say, well, what's wrong with this? We're, this is a good thing. Started something new. But I tell you, it's not because it's not talking about the God of Abraham. The Pledge of Allegiance is demonic. Even though it has the word God in it, under God, I tell you, it is not the God of Abraham, but rather the God of fortresses that this is referencing. At least this is one of the gods among others. We are not supposed to love our parents, or I should say we are supposed to hate our parents and our children in comparison to how much we love Christ. We are not to be of this world. We are in this world, but not of this world. We're not supposed to love the things of this world. But when somebody is swearing in allegiance to a flag, to a flag, I don't care what country it is. If you are pledging allegiance to the flag, then you are not honoring God. Rather, you are honoring this world 
and the ruler of this world, who is Satan. And so you are actually blaspheming God when you say this pledge of allegiance. You are dishonoring God when you use his name, when you use the name of God, when you invoke God in this pledge of allegiance to a flag. It has nothing to do with God's kingdom and everything to do with the kingdom of this world and the ruler who is the ruler of this world, who, who is Satan. Now I'd like to talk about the American dollar bill, the American currency. So that was in 1954 when the, the word God was invoked and in, is now used in the Pledge of Allegiance. Then consider, I believe it was 1955, though I could be wrong on the exact year. You had the words, in God we trust, placed on the paper money of the United States for the first time. Yes, it was on a coin uh, previously, but on the, the, the paper money, the $1 bill, in God we trust. When that happened, I tell you, this is blaspheming God. Think about the, the American $1 bill, how it has these words, in God we trust. And right beside it, a pyramid with the all-seeing eye at the top of it, a Freemason symbol. Some would say Illuminati. So you have this occult, evil, wicked symbol that has nothing to do with the God of Abraham. It has nothing to do with Yahovah and everything to do with evil, wicked, uh, the, uh, this world ruled by Satan. It has to do with demonic spirits. And you have in God we trust right alongside it. In God we trust on money. We are told we are not to love money. We are told that the love of money is the root of all evil. And yet you invoke God on this money and you can't see a problem with this. My brothers and sisters, it is common sense that there is no way Christ would ever allow his father, would allow God to be in any way, shape, or form put alongside a pyramid with an all-seeing eye and to, to have anything to do with money and the love of money. Americans, especially, they, they idolize money and wealth more than any other country. They, they claim anything that is going to help the poor, well, that's communism. Any kind of social program, that's communism. But Christ was not a capitalist. And so to put God, to invoke God, and have it, that name on the American dollar bill, well, I tell you, this is blasphemy. We are not to be participants in this world in the way that American Christians are in the world, but not of the world. It is easier for a camera to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. And yet today, that is what people are chasing, chasing the great wealth. So, so much blasphemy is going on just in things such as the, the dollar bill, the currency, the, uh, the uh, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And then you look at what's going on in the churches today, how they are blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You have people rolling around on the ground, barking like a dog, crowing like a rooster, laughing hysterically, claiming that this is the Holy Spirit in them, that they are drunk in the Holy Spirit. Well, I tell you, this has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. And because they claim it is the Holy Spirit, they have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And there are many churches in which this is being done. Many high-profile pastors promoting this, promoting the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. 
So since 1954, we can see this downward spiral in the United States. We can see how they are moving on this path that is going to set up the Antichrist and beast system. They are serving and honoring the very God that the Antichrist is going to honor, and that is the God of fortresses. Think of every person that has died from a mass shooting over the course of the past two decades. And think of how each of them, every one of them, was a sacrifice to the God of fortresses. And think of how this God is gaining strength and momentum. Think of how when the Antichrist and beasts actually come on the scene, that things are going to be set up for them by Christians using the Protestant Bible made up of 66 books to, to, use, to use it, to use the passages in it, to take them out of context in order that they can feel good about what they are doing. All right. I believe I've talked long enough. I hope I've been able to get my point across. I hope you can see what's going on in the United States where there are more false prophets than any other nation in the world. I hope you can see what this corrupt mainstream Christianity in the United States is doing, how they have exported their corruption, exported their false gospels, the gospel of prosperity, and so on, the gospel of easy believism. And this is another God that they serve. They don't serve the God of Abraham, but rather the God of easy believism. So, so much wickedness in the churches in the United States. All right, as always, I look forward to your comments and messages. I hope some of you will take the time to watch the videos that I'm providing the links to. Till next time, peace and blessings. Just have a listen to the former President Donald Trump, a Republican, of course, speaking at the NRA conference in Houston, Texas on Friday. Every time a disturbed or demented person commits such a hideous crime, there's always a grotesque effort by some in our society to use the suffering of others to advance their own extreme political agenda. Even more repulsive is their rush to shift blame away from the villains who commit acts of mass violence and to place that blame onto the shoulders of millions of peaceful, law-abiding citizens. What we need now is a top-to-bottom security overhaul at schools all across our country. Every building should have a single point of entry. There should be strong exterior fencing, metal detectors, and the use of new technology to make sure that no unauthorized individual can ever enter the school with a weapon. My goodness, uh, I have always knew he was a bit demented. I'm utterly convinced now of that fact. Uh, they want to turn schools into prisons with uh, security fences. Only one exit or entrance to the school. What happens in the case of fire or anything else? Or indeed, if a number of shooters get into a school and control the entrance and exit, what then for the children? How do they make good their escape? This is insane carry on from Trump and his Republican cohorts, but uh, it's a, an insanity that is shared right across a particular cohort of the electorate in the United States.